As we begin the process of reviewing our curriculum maps, I want to take a few minutes and explain to all of you several uh, ideas that I have about the benefits of the curriculum maps and also try to answer some of your questions uh, that you gave me in the survey that I sent out to you. Um, one of the first things I want to let you know is that we're not doing this in a vacuum. Uh, I've spoken with people either uh, in person or on the telephone or by email at several different schools uh, asking them how they handle their curriculum, getting ideas from them about what they do, uh, confirming some ideas that we already have about what our curriculum maps need to be and need to accomplish. Uh, and the schools that I spoke with are schools that are very much like ours. They're schools that have a student management system like RenWeb or some uh, equivalent. They have a learning management system in many of their school uh, many of their classes like Moodle and uh, in addition to that they have a curriculum management system some uh, use curricular plans some use other systems so let, let's talk a little bit about uh, what we mean by curriculum maps and let's start off by talking about what maps are not um, first thing that I want to discuss with you is, a f is the fact that maps are not strictly for accreditation purposes. Uh, I know that uh, in the past, uh, about five years ago, we frantically put together curriculum maps, uh, put them together and sent them off for accreditation. And to be very honest, many of us have not looked at those maps in the last five years. With what we want to accomplish with ours, that's not what we are doing. That's not what we want maps to become. Uh, at the same time, maps are not going to be daily lesson plans. These are not something that uh, administrators or myself or you go in and uh, have specific things that you're going to do on a day-to-day -day basis in your classroom within uh, this particular part of the curriculum map. The, the software will be, allow you to do that if you choose to, but that's not something at this point in time that we're looking at doing. Uh, other things are maps are not specific page numbers. Uh, many of the maps, including my own right now, have a specific page number or, or specific references to chapters in the book that I was teaching at the time that the map was written. That's not what uh, a good curriculum map should have. And kind of to follow up with that, maps are not driven by a specific textbook. Uh, several of you had the concern that uh, I've changed textbooks since then, so the map needs to be redone. Well, that may be the case right now, but as we work through our maps, we want our maps to be something that are not going to need dramatic changes just because we change a textbook. Our maps should drive us to adopting textbooks, not our textbooks, may mean that we have to change what our maps are. So that's a little bit of what map, our curriculum maps are not supposed to be. Well, what are the maps supposed to be? Our maps should be a basic overview of all the concepts and objectives and standards that are covered throughout a course. They should be just what maps mean to all of us. It should be a map, it should be a layout, it should be a blueprint of what we're going to do in this course over the entire year or semester that we have these specific students. Um, it doesn't have to say specific um, times that we're going to spend 30 minutes on this thing or 45 minutes on this thing. It w does need to have broad time frames in there. It also needs to have broad concepts and objectives, but not down to, to specifics of, I'm going to use this specific page. I'm going to do this specific thing. Uh, that's not what we're needing out of our maps. Uh, we need our maps for continuity throughout the school and to have some level of accountability throughout the school. And we'll go into those two things in a little more detail in the next few slides. And also maps are something that we will be using and we will be reviewing regularly throughout the year. Now I don't want you to panic at that and say this is one more thing that I'm going to be asking you to do. What I'm asking you to do is become a better teacher and by doing part of that is going to be going over our maps and reviewing to be sure yes we're on pace no we're behind what have we got to change I didn't like the way this worked so we need to change it for next year a constant review of what we're doing here 
what do we mean by continuity? Well, we've got uh, two different levels, I would say, uh, of continuity here. First of all, we want to look at the continuity all the way from our pre-kindergartners up through our 12th graders. Um, we are unique to any public school systems in that we can have a broad overview of the entire system within our same campus. Uh, and we need to be sure that what's happening in third grade science supports what's happening in fourth grade science and fifth grade science and so on, so forth all the way up the line. So as academic dean, part of my job is to look at everything and be sure that within each school we are accomplishing what we need to, but that we're accomplishing it in a way that's going to mean that the students are prepared for the next step. So we want to have that continuity from one grade to another and from one school to another. Another reason that we need the continuity or that it's important is just from a teaching staff. As you see there on your screen, uh, I looked and 70% of our teaching staff have been at Prince for five years or less. Um, and if you look even closer at that, some that have been here six or seven years are teaching maybe in a different school, at least in a different uh, subject area or a different class within the same subject area than they were at that time. So we've had quite a bit of change in that. Now that's not necessarily change because of people leaving. Some of it is, but some of it is simply because our school has grown so much. But what all of that means is that uh, what was done five years ago, if it's not being evaluated and reviewed and looked at on a regular basis, we don't really know what's happening today in our classrooms compared to what we say is happening in there. So that, that's another important aspect of this, uh, is that we can have some continuity so that when there are teacher changes, when there are people that come in, we've got a document to hand to them as opposed to, uh, here's the textbook. All of us have been in that case before, and all of us have seen what happens in those situations where with all the good intentions, we hand a, a teacher their, a textbook, and all of us have been in that position where it's taken us one to two to maybe three years before we feel comfortable that we're going at a pace and we're covering what we need to cover. So if we can get the continuity like, we, like it needs to be within our curriculum maps, then it will take that burden away and make it a much easier transition when we have changes in that respect. What about accountability? Well, if we do not have some level of accountability, if we do not have some level of uh, oversight by uh, myself and by the principals, we can't tell our parents, we can't tell our uh, constituents what exactly we're teaching. So we need some level of accountability by doing our maps We'll have a pacing guide that we know has been looked at not only by a classroom teacher, but it's been looked at by administrators. And we've said, yes, this is the concepts. These are the concepts that we want to teach in this particular class. These are the things that we expect to be done. And this pacing, we believe, will allow us to do that. It gives us a little bit more of an idea of what's, um, what's going on in the classroom. It also gives us as administrators uh, a little bit more oversight so that when we come to your class to see what's going on, we've got that assurance that you're on the pace that you need to be to accomplish all the goals that we've set out for this particular course. Uh, a good uh, example of this uh, I, that I, I recently heard in talking with other people is suppose you were about to build a house. Um, if you've ever gone through that process, sometimes it's a long, uh, drawn-out process. It can be painful for us. But uh, how many of you would start building a house by simply going out and laying some stuff out on the ground and then going to the store and buying a few boards and coming back? And maybe go buy a couple of truckloads of brick and come back? I don't think any of us would. We're going to have a complete blueprint of what we expect that house to look like before we ever start. So I want you to think of our curriculum maps as that. It, it's a blueprint of this is how we're going to get to what we need to. Um, if any of you have gone through building a house, some of the most frustrating things would be getting all the subcontractors lined up so that when one is finished, the next one's ready to go in. So think of that in 
think of that same type of process as we look at our curriculum maps. We want to be sure that we're ready for the next step when we get through with what we're at. So that's just kind of an overview of what a curriculum maps are, uh, what they are not. Now, the big question that many of you have is, well, why can't we just do this within RunWeb? Why can't we do this within Moodle? Why can't I just keep the Word documents like we did uh, a few years ago? Why have I got to learn a new system? Um, and, and I want to give a little bit of time to try and answer that. Um, a new system like Curricula Plan, uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about, more about my findings with Curricula Plan in just a couple of minutes, but makes it much easier to look at an entire overview of a particular subject area at one time. Uh, recently, uh, in the last uh, month, the math department, we have sat down and we've gone through all of our standards and all of our uh, what we're presently teaching in all of our classes. Um, it took uh, four days uh, to do that. Uh, I took each teacher out of the classroom uh, for an entire for about four hours one day, and we sit down and we went through this uh, in small groups. Before that, uh, the teachers had gone through and matched up the standards or, or said yes we're teaching these, no we're not teaching these. Um, and, and after we went through this process we found some uh, some holes in what we were teaching. Now it was a very good exercise however it probably took 40 to 50 man hours to find out that we've got some holes. Well once we've got a system in place uh, and got everything up to date and to this extent that we want it to be, that 40-hour process can be done much quicker, probably in three to four minutes, and we can see what holes we might have. When we get back our um, achievement test scores or our SAT scores, and we begin evaluating those, and we look at those and see that we are weak in a specific uh, area. Uh, suppose that we see that our students are trending downward in uh, their um, computation in math, for example, or in their reading comprehension. Then we can go back and in just a few keystrokes, probably in the matter of a few minutes, we can see where we're teaching these specific things. And how are we teaching these things? Are we teaching them well? Maybe we need to adjust some of those things. So that's one of the big reasons that we need this. Uh, it will allow us to very quickly go in and look at the specific standards and where they're taught and how often they're taught. So maybe we're spending time in a high school course in uh, social studies teaching something that's already been taught two or three or four times and yet in high school we're teaching it as though it's brand new. So that's good information for us to have so we can move forward and not spend as much time on things that students have already seen. And, and as I said before, we can look at the concepts, we can look at the standards, we can say how often we're teaching them. So that's one of the reasons that we're getting into this. And, and in, in my talking with other schools, every one of them was just, just like us. They're using already two or in the once they're using a curriculum system, they're using a third system. Uh, and it's a little bit of a learning curve to begin with, but once they get accustomed to it, it's something that can be easily done. Now, during this process, I also looked at several other curriculum management systems in addition to Curriculum Plan. Uh, there are many of them out there on the market today. Of the ones that I looked at, I saw no advantage to go into another system over curricula plan. All of them have basically the same uh, abilities, so all the same capabilities, so I think we're better served right now to just stick with what we have. We will evaluate it again probably in two to three years. So how are we going to accomplish all this? This sounds daunting, uh, so uh, I know that all of you are busy. So I want to lay out an entire plan here. Some of you are already reading ahead and you've already started grumbling. So stop grumbling because we've got several things that we want to talk through here. Um, the first thing we want to do is we will meet, uh, try to meet with all of you uh, within uh, during the last week in Mar uh, February or the first week in March 
and get you logged into curriculum plan and get you comfortable in curriculum plan to a certain degree. Uh, one thing that we're going to talk, focus on as we go through this process, if you go into curriculum plan, there's about six different sections right now. We're only going to focus on one section of each map right now. We're going to focus on the content and objectives. And we're going to talk about uh, in this brief meeting what are good and bad content and objectives. I'll show you one of my units that has bad content and objectives there and explain why it's bad. Uh, and we'll also have some examples from other schools of good content and objectives uh, and just try to give you an idea of that. Now, when we say that, uh, most of us have some good information there. I know in my own example, the stuff that's there that I say is bad, it really just needs cleaning up a little bit. It's got some uh, references to specific pages or to specific sections or to specific chapters and just changing it into a bulleted list. So I don't think for most of us we're starting about, we're talking about starting from scratch and throwing away everything we had before. That's not what we're talking about. During this time, we're also going to have each of you log in and we're going to have each of you look at at least one of your units, look at the content and objectives, and make changes that need to be made there. So anything that we are saying we don't want in there, we'll have you take it out and we'll have, have you try and display it like we want it to be displayed there. And we hope to accomplish that before we ever leave the room that particular day. We also will show you how to review and revise the unit time length. We, we've got units in all of our uh, areas and in, in all of our maps right now. We want those units to be accurate as to the time that we are actually teaching them there. And we'll also sh show you how we will de de demonstrate to you how these will be submitted for approval. And when you submit it for approval, you're just saying, I've finished up on this. Uh, Kendall, I want you to look over this. And that's, it's a simple process, but we'll show you how to do, do that. So that's quite a bit to accomplish in 30 to 40 minutes, and we'll, we'll give you some things you need to do in advance so when we come in there, we're ready to go. Well, past that, another thing, and Ms. Uh, Stamey has already worked this out, we're going to give each of you a teacher work day. Now, that does not mean that all of you are going to have a teacher work day at the same time. In K through 5, we're going to have a work day for each grade level, K, 1, 2, 3, so forth and so on. And in 6 through 12, we will have a work day for each department. Uh, Ms. Stamey will have subs for, to come in and teach all your classes that day. Uh, we'll give you the computer lab out in Cottage B. And your job for that day is going to be to go through your units uh, each individual teacher as a department, however you choose to do so, and begin looking at the content and objectives and revising those contents and objectives. Cindy Hale and myself will not be out there with you the entire time. We will be available to come out and answer questions at any given time, uh, but this is time for you to work. If you want to get lunch from the cafeteria that day, you're welcome to do so, and the school will pay for your lunch on that particular day. No, we can't let you go off campus for lunch because uh, you might get caught in a, a big crowd and miss one or two hours of work that way. So we want you to either bring your lunch, or if you want to buy from the cafeteria, you can buy from the cafeteria. Don't ask if so-and-so can go get lunch for us and bring it back, and we'll work. Uh, this is a work day for you. But by the end of that day, we would expect several of the content and objectives to be completed, several of the maps to have those completed. Now, I would say on general, if there's three teachers, I would think that three of the units uh, could be completed by that time. This is going to, this may not be accurate, but I hope it is. Uh, I hope giving you an entire day will allow you to get some of the work done there. You'll have your, uh, uh, cohorts there with you so y'all can talk about things and hopefully over the course of a day can get a real good feel for what this is going to look like and the the ease of doing it. Well after that's done uh, where do we go from there? Uh, by the May 1 of this school year I want all of the content and objective sections of all of the maps completed um, and, and, and submitted to me for approval. 
uh, as you submit them, I'll go through and I'll look at them. If there are changes that need to be made still, I'll send it back to you and let you know that it needs to be changed. If not, I'll approve it and that section of our curriculum map will be completed. I believe that's the most difficult part of our curriculum map to get accomplished this first time. So that's the reason we're tackling it first. So uh, just be sure that, I want, uh, that you understand this is expected to be finished by May 1. And we do want good work. So hopefully the day that we're giving you in March to get this accomplished will get you started on it. I'm sorry we can't give you any more time to work on it. But hopefully once you get started there in March, you'll find that it's relatively simple to get the other knocked out as time permits during the school year. But by May 1, I will expect all of them to be submitted with the content and objectives reviewed and necessary changes. What I will do then is before the last day of school, I will send it back to you as that part as having been approved. So you'll be able to see before you leave school this year a huge chunk of the curriculum map completed uh, at this particular time. During post planning, we will begin phase two, which is going to be tying the standards to the uh, content and objectives. And for some of you that have gone through the process before, you're saying to yourself right now, isn't this backwards? Shouldn't we work with the standards first? And I would say yes. Uh, under normal cases, we would start with the standards. And if any of you want to do that, you just tell myself or Miss Hale, we will delete the map out that is there now and let you start from scratch. And you can go with the standards first and then create the content and objectives from that. We've got no problem with doing that. But we felt like we've, in most cases, we've got a lot of good material already there and there's no reason to throw it away uh, in order to start with the standards here. But any of you that want to do that, please let me know and we will talk about that and give you the procedures for that as well. Um, but what we are going to do in phase two during post planning, we'll give you a paper copy of the content and objectives and a paper copy of the standards that correlate with that particular course. And we will also show you how, we, how those standards are to be tied together with the content and objectives and curricular plan. We'll demonstrate it there uh, in the cafeteria during one day. And then we ask that you get all of that completed by August 1. Now, this should not be nearly as time consuming as uh, content and objectives. It should be a matter of becoming familiar with the standards, familiar enough to just simply pull them out, uh, write down the number associated with the standard, and later on we'll go in, you'll go into curricular plans sometime over the summer and uh, attach those standards so that then in one document we'll have both the content and objectives and the standards there. Uh, if you'd like to coordinate a day at school uh, so that your entire team in K-5 or so that your entire department in 6 through 12 uh, can come in and work together, I would strongly recommend that. I think it would be a great way to, to knock it out and you could divide and conquer. Uh, so if you'd like to do that, uh, please feel free to do that. Uh, we'll see if we can't even provide you with lunch uh, on that day in the summer if you'd like to. Uh, and uh, we would even... Uh, go off campus and get that for you or have it catered to the school possibly. So uh, if, you, if you're interested in that, uh, let us know and we'll definitely see about getting it uh, done for you. So that will be phase two and that needs to be finished by August the 1st. All right, what about phase three? Uh, again, when you look in your uh, curriculum maps right now, there are three other, actually four other sections, but there's three other sections that we'll focus on uh, as school begins. And these should be very short, uh, very easy for you to accomplish here. There are the activities and methods, books and materials, and assessment uh, sections. Uh, it, uh, we just need to be sure that the books that you're using are listed there. Any supplemental material that you're using is listed there. Maybe if you're using a specific website, maybe you're using BrainPop, those type things would be listed under books and materials. Under activities and methods, many of you have smart boards now that you did not have when these were written. So a smart board, if you're using it in the classroom, needs to be added there. Maybe you're using blogs, maybe you're using uh, iPads, some of you have uh, some of those in your classroom. Those things need to be listed 
listed under activities and methods. Uh, and once we get uh, also assessments, maybe you're doing uh, papers, maybe you're doing portfolios, quizzes, anything that you're using to assess each of the units. So much of the stuff will be standard from unit to unit but there might be one specific unit that you're only doing portfolios on. If that's the case, then you'd want to list portfolios only in that specific unit. But that stuff will need to be reviewed during the month of September, and we will get that, uh, get that reviewed, revised, and approved just like we did with the standards and just like we did with the content and objectives. So all the time, every time you go through and change something, it's going to be sent to myself uh, to me uh, to review and look at and be sure that uh, it's up to where we want it to be. Then the final phase of our uh, review of all our curriculum maps is going to be the biblical integration. Uh, I don't have this planned out perfectly yet, but we want to have time next year to talk more about and to be taught more about biblical integration. And we want to get down to a, a very practical level with this. Um, with many of us, the biblical integration right now uh, is not very good. I'm speaking to myself uh, as, as to some of you. But we want to work on that and get that a better and a stronger part of our curriculum. Uh, we'll get someone to come in and talk with us about what it is, what it is not, and then give you some examples. And then again, we'll go back through this process of reviewing it, going in and making changes where it needs to be, and you'll approve it, uh, and hopefully we can accomplish that during the first semester of next school year. So that's an awful lot. Um, but uh, it's necessary if we're going to continue uh, moving our school forward and going to uh, accomplish the goals that we need to accomplish as a school. So now, what do you need to do as a teacher right now? Um, we need you to do some things before we have our uh, meetings the last week in February. And what we need you to do is to go to the Curricula Plan site. There's the URL to it right there, hosting.curriculaplan.com, and log in. Your login should be your school email address and a password that you have set. If you do not know what that is, I'll show you the site in just a minute and show you where the forgot password link is. And you can reset your password. If you have any trouble with any of this, you'll need to email Miss Hale and she will uh, get you squared away with that. So the first thing we want to be sure you can do is log in. The second thing we want you to be sure of is that all of the courses that you teach have a map listed. And we're going to show you that right now. So if you'll go in your browser and go to hosting.curriculaplan.com, this is what you should see. And you'll put in your username, your email address there, and your password. If you're not sure what your password is, you can use this link right here, and they will reset your password for it. Unfortunately, we can't go in and reset that password for you now. But if you have any trouble with that, you email Ms. Hale or you email myself, and we will get you squared away and help you through that process. But once you log in, then you should be taken to this page here, and over on the right side, you should see our school listed, Prince Avenue Christian School Curriculum Plan. You simply click on it, and in front of you should be all the maps that are associated with you. Notice that I have one map uh, for my calculus class. That's all the classes I teach. That's all that should be listed there. So when you log in at this point, you should see every course that you teach. If you do not see a course that you teach, you email Miss Hale or myself and say, I teach um, marketing and it's not listed there. Then we need to know that so we can get it corrected. This is crucial that you get this done before our meetings on the week of the 24th because once we start that meeting, we don't need to be wasting time with one or two of you that haven't done what you were asked to do and hold everybody else back. We'll just have to set aside a different time to meet with you after school one day. So please get this done. If you have any trouble with it at all, please come and see me or email me or email Miss Hale and we'll get this all worked out for you. In summary, I know this process seems daunting for all of us right now. 
it seems like a lot of extra work and, and many of us are wondering what are we going to really accomplish with this and, and I can only tell you that I believe that once we get this done and once we get accustomed to looking at this and reviewing this on a regular basis uh, I think we'll see that we become much better educators and we have a much better understanding of what we're doing in the classroom and we'll be doing a much better job. This system is going to be very powerful to do lots of things. We're going to be using a small part of it for what we need it to be, but if any of you want to use it for other things, we'll be glad to show you how and let you experiment with that as well. Uh, I hope this has answered all of your questions that you might have. Feel free, if you still have questions, to drop me an email. Uh, let me know what that question is, and I'll do my very best to answer it for you as well. I hope you continue enjoying the, the snow days that we've had, uh, and we look forward to seeing you back at school in the very near future.